Just off the Pullen Road traffic circle in Raleigh, North Carolina, is the Gregg Museum of Art and Design, NC State University's collecting and exhibiting museum. It takes many people to run a museum. Here are just some of the jobs people do. Hi, my name is Christina Marchington, and I'm the Educational Programs Assistant at the Gregg Museum of Art and Design at NC State. As the Educational Programs Assistant, I work closely with the Curator of Education to plan, manage, and develop educational and community programs in conjunction with our rotating exhibitions and permanent collections. These programs often include artist talks and lectures, panel discussions, and film screenings. For now, most of our programming will temporarily take place virtually in the form of educational videos about our permanent collection and current exhibitions, interactive live artist talks, and interviews on Zoom, and live guided virtual tours every month. I develop and lead these virtual and in-person tours for K-12 students and teachers, NC State faculty, staff, and students, as well as community or family groups. These tours are always different and fun for me. I facilitate class and group visits to the Gregg Museum when we're open to the public. Sometimes classes and groups request tours with us and other times I reach out to them. Because exhibitions are often changing at the Gregg Museum, there's always something new for students, professors, or any visitors to engage with and learn from. Part of my job is making these objects in these exhibitions accessible and understandable to any who are interested when I lead a tour. However, to make this possible, I have to take the time to learn about the objects on display so that I can understand them, their context, and meaning for myself. Developing a tour for an exhibition takes many steps. First, I do lots of research. I start by thoroughly reading all information provided by the curator or curators of the exhibition I'm focusing on. This includes wall labels for each object, any text the curators and director provide on the gallery wall, and exhibition catalogs. An exhibition catalog can be short or long, but it's always aimed at a large audience and serves to present more information about an exhibition or artist in a reader-friendly way. I will often research individual objects in an exhibition to learn more about the history of the culture from which it came, material of which it's made, or the artist by whom it was created. Next, I decide the order in which I present my information to a group. I do this to make sure in-person tour groups can move safely between or around objects in the gallery and to create themes or sections in a tour to stay organized. I will often keep my notes with me in case I forget specific information about an object. When I finalize my tour notes, I take myself through the gallery space and practice on my own. I will time myself because I want to be sure to keep any tour, virtual or in-person, under an hour. This is to allow time for participants' questions and to give them time to visit other exhibitions in the museum. Finally, I save my tour notes as a general file and I refer back to them for each group or class visit. My notes often change and grow over time as I learn more about an object or decide to change the order in which I present the information. Sometimes my tours are customized to the class or group that is visiting. For example, if a poetry class wants to visit the Gregg Museum, they will often have a class assignment they need to complete. This means I will give an overview of the exhibition and go into detail about maybe one or two objects on display so that teachers and students can continue their lessons or assignments. There's no one perfect avenue into the museum field, but I can tell you a little bit about my experiences and my educational background. I've always liked art, museums, and history. So after high school, I decided to double major in art history and French at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. While a student at UNCW, I focused my studies on medieval and northern renaissance art and artists because that's what interested me at the time. I studied French because having a knowledge of a language other than English, particularly the Romance languages or German, is somewhat of an unknown requirement in studying history or art history. Understanding different languages is helpful when you have to read a book, a paper, or a resource that is not in English. It was also a requirement when I got to grad school. While in college, I applied for and got an internship at the Philadelphia Museum of Art in Pennsylvania. This was an unpaid internship that took place over a few months during the summer. While working for the Philadelphia Museum of Art, I learned how to write lesson plans and develop tours for groups of students from kindergarten through 12th grade. I took many groups on tours throughout the museum and sometimes I even got lost. It was a great learning experience for me because I learned that I wanted to pursue a career in museum education rather than become a professor or a teacher in a classroom. After I graduated from UNCW, I went to the University of Missouri, or Mizzou, for my master's degree in art history. There, I shifted my focus from medieval and northern renaissance art to the history of collecting and the art market in the 20th century. The 20th century is one way to refer to the 1900s. A century is always one number after the years you're referencing. 
While a student at UNCW and Mizzou, most of my schoolwork required in-depth research and writing. If you study history, art history, or anthropology, expect to write a lot of papers. To finish my master's degree, I had to complete a large independent research project called a master's thesis. This was about a 100-page paper that showed my professors that I could successfully conduct research and support my arguments in a written format. Some people might think that homework or writing papers will not be important once you're out of school, but this is not the case if you work in museum education. Most of my work requires me to use my research and writing skills often to teach others about the things in our museum. Studying art or art history is not the only way to work in an art museum. There are many degrees like history, anthropology, museum studies, arts education, or arts administration that can be combined with experiences that interest you. Allow yourself to explore different subjects and time periods in school. There's always so much to learn. Thank you so much for hearing about my job as the Educational Programs Assistant at the Gregg Museum of Art and Design. I hope to see you for a tour sometime. As always, the Gregg is free and open to the public. We hope you'll visit us soon, in person or virtually. You can find lots of information at our website, gregg.arts.ncsu.edu.